And unfortunately, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, the answer is those are sample vocals of Splice. Hey guys, so welcome to another daily vlog of my life as a DJ and producer. Today, again, just in the closet because the virus crisis is still happening. Today is the very, very last day I'm staying at home. Tomorrow, Monday, everything, at least for me, is back to normal as much as possible. Legally, we're allowed to open businesses again in Germany. I will, of course, not let anyone else back into the studio, except for people that are employed. And out of all of the people that I employ, just one person. So it will be me on one floor, the other person on another floor, all separated, all controlled, no contact hand washing and everything possible to prevent this from spreading. And then fully, fully back to normal as usual as before. I don't know, probably two or three more months. So it's me stuck at home. And yeah, at least I had time to listen to all of the demos that I got submitted for my label. And we already covered like tips and tricks, how to send out demos, how to get a release on a label. Like all of this is already here on this channel. There is like one thing in particular I, I would love to warn everyone out there. Cause we get a lot of demos, good demos sometimes with good to amazing vocals. And the first thing whenever we like a song is to ask the artist where they got the vocals from. And unfortunately in 99.9% .9 of the cases, the answer is those are sample vocals of Splice. And I know it's a viable option for a lot of people that don't have a singer songwriter available, but like I, can just recommend to not use them as much as possible. Yes, those vocals are good. Yes, you're legally allowed to use them and make money and send it out to a label and the label's allowed to sign it. That's not the problem. My biggest concerns when it comes to splice vocals or any sampled vocal that is for you legally to allow, of course, is that it's part of your creative process as an artist to either write these vocals, record these vocals, or at least select these vocals and pick them, or maybe get someone to collaborate with to take care of that. It's like your choice is already you being an artist. If you just pick a finished vocal of Splice, that's already taking away at least 50% of your actual work. So it's way less creative, way more restricting, especially for the full pop on vocals that people just slap onto a beat. And you can hear that. I listen to a lot of demos where I'm like, wow, the vocals are cool, nice vibe, good recorded, and the instrumental doesn't fit and sounds just really, really bad. And that's usually when, when the producer's skill are way below the singer-songwriter's skill. Those songs usually immediately turn me off. There is no way that a really good vocal can make up for shitty production. So this will also make you as an artist a little lazy because the vocal is amazing. You don't have to do a lot and then do even less because the vocal takes care of a lot of things. For example, arrangement, like having the most interesting element in there. Mixing is a lot easier because you have like a voice in there to reference everything else to. So that's kind of the creative part why I personally would never ever use a splice vocal and I also try not to release. I know in the past we had some releases of people using splice vocals for my label. Sometimes either they creatively change them so much that it's fine or they cut them up and just rearrange them like pitched vocals. Or sometimes we just didn't know because the artist didn't tell us. Because there is still a legal problem to these spliced vocals and that is actually whenever you have the song finished you release it with a label. For example, YouTube can be a huge, huge mess because the YouTube fingerprint algorithm that detects songs and knows which song belongs to who. Sometimes if the vocal is the same, it thinks it's the same song. So it might happen that you release your song with splice vocals. Someone else already did and they will get all of the money of your song or maybe even block it or maybe even like reported and you will get your YouTube channel 
deleted if this happens two times or not three times i think three three strikes and you're out so that's definitely something to consider and now you might ask what other options do i have because a lot of people that i know that are producers their biggest struggle is getting vocals and the same also for me in the past at least getting good vocals was really really hard it's getting easier and easier which usually has to do with me being better connected to the right people. And also, I think most importantly, making better music. Because the better your music, the more someone that can actually sing and songwrite will be interested to work with you together. Because they get a lot of offers, they get a lot of instrumentals, and they of course just pick the ones that they think are, are good. On top of that, of course, they will also check out your social media, check how many plays you have on Spotify, so getting above like 50,000 plays per month on Spotify definitely helps to get most vocalists on board. So it's a process of building up your career and starting, like I, for example, started with like very, very, very shitty singer-songwriters that aren't even singer-songwriters, just friends. I recorded them, tried to like make it as good as possible, mix it properly, record it properly. These are skills that you need to obtain as a producer. Because just making an instrumental and slapping a vocal on top, that's not really producing. You should be able to guide a vocalist, to record with them together in a session. You should be able to pick the right singer-songwriter for the right instrumental. And yeah, give them guidance, tell them what to improve, how to change it which isn't really possible with a vocal that is already done on Splice. I really love like giving them feedback. For example, sometimes the verses are already too hectic and need to be slower, less words, maybe different wording, maybe exchanging the chorus entirely. These kind of creative freedom possibilities are all gone. And then of course, once you have some really songs with good vocals on top, then you will get better singer songwriters. Just work your way up. If you never start working your way up with just using splice vocals, you will never ever get to the point where you get like good original vocals. And really the third reason why I would never use them for any of my songs, you just like, <laughs> it's your creative work. And it's kind of silly to have the same creative work in a sense already available. Like th the world needs new, fresh, interesting music. And if we just use the same vocal over and over and over again and just have like different instrumentals underneath, that's not really like advancing us as music producers and music in general. And especially if it's a full vocal and I don't know, the singer is singing I Believe In You, then you have like on Spotify six songs called I Believe In You, all with the same vocal. That's usually very cringy. So again, just to make it clear, using these vocals is legally possible and you might even find a label for them. It is a good way of training how to work with vocals without spending any money. But whenever you get to the point where it's about to release a song, make it public, share it with everyone, I think you should put the effort into it and actually get original vocals for your songs. Start out with family and friends, ask people on SoundCloud, ask management companies, make a list with all of the vocals that you heard on other records that you like, write them an email, write a hundred emails, a thousand emails. I've probably in my life wrote at least five, six thousand emails just to vocalists. And at the end, like out of a hundred, maybe one or two respond, depending on how good your music is and how big your profile is and how well you're connected. And then actually like having a song released out of a hundred, then maybe one. But that's the kind of effort you have to put into it to actually advance and have like a full vocal song. But anyways, that's just like my my opinion. I, I don't like releasing splice vocal stuff on my label because it's kind of pointless, especially if they're already multiple versions out there. I don't like to use it for my own music. I like to either create songs in a session with a singer songwriter with me in the same studio and guiding them and also like my input being part of the song. And I hope this this will motivate you to, to do the same. So if you have any song finished with splice vocals on top, just write a couple of emails and try to find someone. Trust me, it's, it's worth it. It's definitely more your own work than just, just slapping a vocal on top that already was used multiple times. Anyways, thanks all for watching. Let me know what you think about these types of vocals. Do you use them? You never use them? You just don't want to use them because it's not really cool? 
you don't really care, it's all about just having a good song at the end, would you release it as a label? Do you think it's a lot harder to get a release on a label if you use splice vocals? Let me know, would be really interesting. Tomorrow, 100%, finally, fully back to the studio. Can't wait. Can't do